Reincarnation, also known as rebirth or transmigration, is the concept that the non-physical essence of a living being begins a new life in a different physical form or body after biological death. The following is a classic case of reincarnation. In 1969, when Martin Heal from Manchester, UK, was a young boy of seven, he found a suitcase filled with war memorabilia in his father's bedroom. He asked his father what it was. His father told him that it was a telephone that soldiers used in the Second World War. His father then showed him how it worked by walking into another room and turning a handle, making it ring at the other end that young Martin was holding and they were able to speak with each other. Martin then asked his father what a particular button was used for. His father said it was used for Morse code and showed him. Within a fraction of a second of hearing the Morse code, the actual room itself changed completely for young Martin. He then heard a low rumble before an image appeared in his head of an old aircraft in the sky being attacked by a smaller aircraft. All of a sudden, the larger aircraft exploded. Martin could not understand what was happening and became frightened. In his mind, one minute he was inside a plane and the next minute he was being fired upon before the plane exploded into flames. He did not understand why he was in the plane and then being shot down. He told his father, who did not understand what his son was talking about, but Martin insisted that the images suddenly appeared in his head after hearing the Morse code sounds. It was so real and was not in his imagination. Martin lived with the horror for the next 26 years, till one day in 1995 the image came back more vividly than ever. He was watching the VE, that is, Victory in Europe, celebrations on television, Watching the military celebrations triggered his imagination and the images it had had as a child immediately came back to him and he was again confused because he could now actually feel the emotions of the airmen. But in real life, he had nothing to do with aircrafts or that period in history. Why was he receiving these vivid images? Martin decided to find out why he was actually feeling the emotions and had read somewhere about regression therapy which could possibly give him some insights and actual answers that he was seeking. After checking the phone book, he came across a woman by the name of Josie Van Asten, who was a Dutch hypnotherapist. Josie believed a person could be hypnotized and regress back to a former life. As Martin was laying down in the darkened candlelit room, she then told him to go back in time. Martin was then asked what his name was, and he replied, Richard Seymour. She asked him how old he was, and he replied 18. She then asked what year it was, and he replied 1938. Martin later said that what he was observing on hypnosis was like actually watching a television screen. She then asked him to go forward in time and ask him where he was. Martin said that it was at an RAF base and was putting on a uniform, and was complaining that the sleeves were too long. He said that he had been chosen to learn Morse code, and they were now preparing for a mission. While he was on the plane, he said that he could feel all the extreme emotions and the realisation that was about to fly over to Germany. He realised that he had now taken on the emotions of that person. He was no longer Martin Hill, but was actually reliving that flight as that person. He then described bright lights coming from under the plane before an explosion. She asked him whether he was still alive, and he replied, No, my body won't be found because of the explosion. Totally intrigued by the results of the regression, Martin contacted a World War II archivist to see if there'd ever been a Richard Seymour who served in the RAF. A short time later, he was advised that a Richard Seymour had flown in the RAF and flew in missions during the war. Martin could not believe what had been revealed on hypnosis. He found that Richard Seymour had been a wireless operator during World War II before Richard's plane had been shot down on July the 29th, 1942, during a bombing mission to Germany. His plane was the target of an ace Messerschmitt pilot, just as Martin had recalled in his regression. Sadly, the airman was listed as missing, presumed dead. Martin Hill was now convinced he'd been Richard Seymour in a previous life, which could now explain the weird events he'd experienced as a young boy, and later as a grown-up. There is an interesting insight into Martin's past life as an RAF airman, when at the age of 17, he actually sat test to join the RAF. 
One of his tests he sat was for Morse code, and during the test Martin had a strange deja vu feeling, which at the time he didn't take much notice of. Two weeks later, he returned to Manchester Careers Information Office for the test results. He was interviewed by a Mr. Hill, who replied, Well, that's amazing, as you got 100%, and that has never happened before in the history of the RAF. Could the results have been a reflection of Martin's natural intelligence, or could it have been previous training in Morse code in the previous life as Richard Seymour? Martin insists that before the hypnosis, he had never heard of a Richard Seymour. But is there any other possible explanation as to how much information you could reasonably pick up about someone else's life? Surely there is only so much detail you could remember. Martin decided to have a second hypnosis session with the hypnotist, but this time he wanted even more rigorous questions about this past life. She asked him to describe the house he grew up in as Richard Seymour. Under hypnosis, he described it as a big house with a large wooden door. She asks him to enter the house and describe what he sees. He sees his parents, for his father's name was Archie and his mother was Mary. Martin said that he began to see the pictures and feel the emotions as strongly, if not stronger, than the actual first regression itself. He then describes the surroundings of the house and everything that happens along with his feelings. Martin said that it felt like it was in that life again. For the next hour and a half, Martin, under hypnosis, described life for Richard Seymour in 1938. He talked about a village with a row of shops near his house. There was a church with a small spire, which his father is the vicar, and there's a pretty bridge over a river opposite his home. He liked going to the river to fish. After the session, Martin decided to investigate and was able to trace Richard Seymour's family to Swallow Field in Berkshire. He was able to locate the village war memorial. On the memorial, he found a tribute to Richard Seymour of the RAF. Under hypnosis, Martin had described the river Blackwater that ran past the village. Also under hypnosis, he said that there was a small row of shops, which today are private houses, that the village church had a short spire, and its pre-war vicar was the Reverend Archibald Seymour, who had lived with his wife Mary and family in the vicarage, just as Martin had described. However, his description of Richard's house did not match the vicarage, so at Martin finally got something wrong. Swallowfield's vicarage had been home to the village's priest since 1956, so nobody coming to the village within the previous 40 years would have known of any other building other than that as being the vicarage. Before then, the old mead house just two doors away was home to the village's clergy, and Martin's description of hypnosis fits that house exactly. It was the home of the Reverend Archibald Seymour in 1938. Yet again, Martin was correct in what he described under hypnosis. After his hypnosis sessions, Martin no longer had flashbacks or dreams. The memories of Richard Seymour had been laid to rest. Yet again, a person who had been hypnotically regressed had accurately described a past life. Is this proof that we all have lived past lives and that reincarnation is real? 